I'm Jen Kramer, Director of Learning Design and Technology at Annie Cannons, and this is the ultimate course in learning CSS layout techniques. We are going to dive deeply into CSS Grid. We'll look at Flexbox, including how we should be using it and its strengths and weaknesses. We will also dive deeply into the latest technologies, including subgrid, container size queries, and container style queries, and responsive images. I'm really excited to teach you all of the latest techniques so let's get started. Guess how we start working with grid. What would be the first thing that I put here? Anybody want to take a guess? Yes. Display. Display what? Grid. Grid. Awesome. Well done. And absolutely nothing happens. OK, we got to keep going. Now I want to have four columns. Anybody know how I might state I want to have four columns here on my page? Call dash four. That, that's a great idea. That would be a perfect name for a class. Um, but the, pro the CSS property is grid-template-columns. So grid-template-columns. So in other words, we're going to set up a pattern. And this pattern is going to be some number of columns going across the page. And I am going to type the following, 1fr, 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 1fr. Does that mean I have four French people here inside of my grid layout? What is an FR? Online people said fraction. Fraction. Fraction is what it stands for. So this stands for fractions. One of the wonderful things about grid is we do not have to do math. We can just say, hey, grid, break this page into four fractions. And it will do the math for you. And look at that. We have four evenly sized columns here on the page. Isn't that amazing? With two little declarations here, we are, we are done. We actually have our four columns. So that is going to put these things all next to each other with no space in between. I can hear the graphic designer screaming already. How about you? OK, so if we want some space between these, we can say gap, something like 2rem. What is a rem? In typography land, the letter M is often used as a reference letter to determine uh, how big or small something is. So if you have one of those really fat fonts, your letter M, it's 1M wide, but it's a really fat 1M. Whereas if you're using like the narrow width fonts, it's a really skinny M, and that's still 1M. OK, so it's relative to that. Here we're looking at the root of the document, so HTML. Usually this means 16 pixels. Why would we want to go through all the bother of doing this with REMs? So if you change your font, it'll change as well? Exactly. So if I change my font size, if I want to scale things up, everything scales up proportionally. Right? OK. OK, so my gap number here, by the way, 2rem, is actually has two dimensions to it. We can have, uh, if you prefer, you could have two uh, numbers here. We can say our column gap is 2rem. And we could also say we have a row gap. Maybe you want a different number for that. I don't know, one rim. OK, we don't have any rows yet, but you can break those into two numbers using that type of notation. You can also combine these. You'll also see this done. So we have just a regular old gap again. And I think it's one rim, two rim. Yes. I always get confused which number comes first. Uh, so it's row and then the column. What if I want to have two moons on the top and two moons underneath? How am I going to set that up? Anyone have a suggestion based on what you know? Or at least what would be a start? Have two one FRs in the columns. Change this to just one FR, one FR. Yeah. Hey, look at that. It worked. Then the second thing to do is we can start laying this out with Flexbox. So we're going to start with display flex. And that will immediately put everything onto a row. And doesn't that look impressive? So we have our logo, and we have a mess that comes after the logo. Cool. Uh, so usually the next thing that I say is flex flow row wrap. You do want the wrap turned on here. Remember, by default, Flexbox is going to give you row, no wrap. But you will want to have your navigation wrapping, particularly as you get to smaller screen sizes, you're going to want those links wrapping onto other lines. So we'll set that here. 
We can't read that right now, so we'll say gap of two rem. And that'll give us a little bit of breathing room. Notice that we have a link that's wrapping onto the other line. And then we can say justify content flex end. So this is going to align us to the right side of the page, just like that. Okay, so now all of the links are kind of up there at the top uh, in line with the word creative, kind of sort of up there at the top of the logo. If I wanna push all those links down towards the bottom, how would I go about doing that? Align items, flex end. Yeah, if I stick a border on this, two pixels solid red, it will show you that I've got all of my links right now, they're pushed to the top of the screen here. So if I say align items, flex end, that is gonna push me down to the bottom and our alignment will be a little bit better, just a little bit better, okay? And of course we can always put on another border, one, uh, two pixels dotted blue, and that'll show us where that UL is in space as well. So if we want to align our links then, uh, it looks okay where it is right now, but all of these items, courses, learn, workshops, join now, they are aligned with the bottom of the tail kind of here in creative space. Cool, but not really what we're looking for. We probably want these words aligned with the bottom of the word space, right? So what would be some way that I could, could give each of these, uh, just these items, courses, learn, workshops, and join now, how could I give them a little bit of a bump up? Padding? Uh, padding bottom? Padding on the bottom would work. Margin on the bottom would work too. Makes no difference in this particular situation. Either one is fine. So what I'm going to say then is li not first child. So all of the other links, but not the first one, we can say margin or padding, bottom 0.9 rem. And that's gonna push us up just enough to align with the bottom of E in space. Nice. I am going to say my grid template columns is 1FR, 1FR. My grid template rows are subgrid. Our grid column is auto. And my grid row is a span to. And so what that's gonna get us is kind of a mess at the moment. Never panic. We're gonna continue on formatting everything here. So this just gets our cards sort of generally into the right place. Then we can work on the layout inside of each of those cards. So for my card image, I'm going to say grid column one slash two and my grid row one slash two. For my card text, display none. So we wanna have the text turned off for all of these cards. Dot text, there we go, dot text, there we go. Then for my card link, I'm going to say grid column span two and grid row two slash three. So that's where that's going to be located. Card first child, grid column, span two, and grid row, span four. So that is going to put all of our cards here uh, next to each other, next to that main card exactly as we wanted. Still got a couple of issues going on here with the layout. Uh, and our headlines are all lined up here underneath exactly as we wanted. So that's looking good. 
Uh, for the first child, we want to show its text. So dot card first child dot text display block. So that'll bring back our paragraph of information here. And I forgot one style up here at the top. So I've got all of my individual cards. I've got their layout spelled out. Uh, the issue that I have right now is I haven't told the H2 where to go. So let's do that up here, dot card H2. And that is our grid column two slash three and our grid row one slash two. Phew, there we go. And so now that I've told the H2 where to go, I've told the image where to go, I told the button where to go, I told the text not to display, and uh, I've got everything running off of the subgrid here, we finally have a layout where everything is all lining up here and we have uh, our big headlines across the bottom. So now if we were to crunch this up, we'll go back to the previous layout, crunch it up further, go to our next layout, and then of course crunch it up even more and we'll go to our mobile layout. Pretty amazing that that's all one code, code base that we have all this content and it's displaying so very differently at all of these different breakpoints. So that is the power of grid. Uh, this kind of layout would be very difficult to achieve with Flexbox. It would be impossible to get all of these cards to line up exactly on the same line. Uh, using Flexbox based layouts just wouldn't happen. Uh, so this is part of the reason that grid is so powerful and so wonderful for doing page layouts. This is what it was designed to do. And so you can achieve amazing things when working with CSS Grid.